Oh, hi. I see you've caught me reading Dragon Age to Venter Knights. Now you might be asking, why am I reading Dragon Age right now? Well, that's because they finally released a Dragon Age game trailer reveal. I'm back at it. I'm back. Finally, Dragon Age has come back. Home. It's been so long since I've played Dragon Age. It has been nine years since the last Dragon Age game. For those who have never played Dragon Age, Dragon Age is a epic fantasy adventure game. You travel around with other characters that you meet around your journey in a world full of human elves, dragons, and all other sorts of demons. The original Dragon Age, Dragon Age Origins, was created by Bioware, and that came out in 2009. I was still in high school when the first Dragon Age came out, which feels a little weird saying out loud. Dragon Age Origins is probably one of my favorite games. It's at least up there with Kingdom Hearts and, ya and the Yakuza series. It's definitely probably below those two somewhere. Dragon Age 2, it took a while for me to warm up to that game, but I definitely found a new appreciation for the game after Inquisition came out. I did not like Inquisition when I first played it. And honestly, I thought we were never going to get another Dragon Age game. Until now, where we finally got not one, but two trailers for the new game, Dragon Age The Veil Guard. Really? The? Drop the the. And to say that these past couple days have been very interesting as a Dragon Age fan is to say the least, honestly. From the name change, to the cinematic reveal trailer, to the gameplay reveal trailer. The Dragon Age fan base has been split. People have not been liking what we've been seeing from, the dra from Dragon Age right now. And some of it I understand, some of it I don't know why. The name change, we'll get into that. I don't think the name change is great either. But the cinematic trailer that was released during the Xbox showcase, man, that was a very, very interesting 24 hours. People went insane when they saw this trailer, and I truly do not understand why. Have you people never seen a cinematic trailer for a game before? They have never been a full representation of the final product of the game. I mean, they're basically teaser trailers, but for video games. And I do understand a little bit, I mean, the tone of the trailers wasn't exactly Dragon Age, but if you watch any previous Dragon Age trailers, there are trailers that are, have weird tones to them as well. A lot of people were worried about the art style of the trailer, which I also didn't understand if I'm being perfectly honest. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I like the art style that was shown in the trailer. I thought it looked kind of cool and unique and different. But also, Dragon Age has never had a consistent art style. I mean, I remember when Dragon Age 2 came out and the art style was different for that game. I'm still not over how different the elves and the, and the dark spawn looked in that game. What is that? What the fuck is that? Also, if you look at the very first trailer for like, say, Dragon Age Origins, if you watch the trailer for that game, you would think that Dragon Age Origins was going to be like a purely action game, which it isn't. I'm pretty sure Inquisition had a trailer that had like rock music in the background, and I think Origins also had a music, it also had a trailer like that, it also had rock music in it, which is very not Dragon Age. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I was a little bit blinded by the trailer because we haven't gotten anything. So I was really just like, please, sir, please, Bioware, give me some more. Give me anything. So I didn't really even think about the art style while watching the trailer until I read the comments. And then I went on Twitter and then I went on Reddit and just everyone hated this trailer. But I, would, I thought it was just a cool showcase of the new characters that we were going to be seeing in, the next, in this Dragon Age game, the Veil Guard that we're going to be playing as. And it's funny too because this is not the first time they've done reveals for characters like this. Like they did this in like a DLC, I'm pretty pretty sure, back in Dragon Age Origins. But whatever. How about the gameplay trailer? What did that look like? Because because in my book, gameplay is king. And I know everyone plays Bioware games for the story, but I needed to see the gameplay. And the gameplay reveal was eh. It was alright. Honestly, I was expecting a little bit more. Now, any problems I have with the gameplay might not be an issue when the game actually comes out. Obviously, Bioware didn't want to reveal too much, and it seems like the gameplay we saw was mostly the beginning of the game. I just wish they showed maybe a little bit more abilities. The game is definitely more fast-paced, at least with the animations, which is also not surprising because they've been trying to do that since Dragon Age 2, trying to make the game appeal to more of a general audience. 
which is fine. I, I think trying to appeal to gamers outside of just Dragon Age fans is a good thing. For a lot of people, Dragon Age Inquisition was their very first Dragon Age game. I know I know a lot of people on the internet and real in real life who started with Inquisition. And they eventually did go back and play the other games, but for, for some people, Inquisition was their first Dragon Age. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Veilguard will be, do the same exact thing, especially considering that it's been so long. Which is also why I think it's funny that a lot of people are saying this game doesn't look like Dragon Age. I mean, again, it's been nine years, so it's not going to have the same feel to it. More than anything, I just hope that it is the different classes still feel different from one another and the companions are useful, which I didn't really get that feeling in this. Again, they only showed off one ability. I mean, it would have been nice if they showed off at the very least two. Honestly, I've been getting more excited just reading about the new stuff they're going to be including in the game from either the website or articles that have been pub published. It seems like there will be a bunch of abilities in this game which is good because that's another problem i have with dragon age is that it seems like every game they keep getting rid of more and more abilities i just hope this game isn't too sluggish because that's one of the reasons why i couldn't i didn't really love inquisition one thing that i am excited for though is the fact that this game is no longer open world which is a huge plus right off the bat you slap open world onto a game and that just means I probably won't finish it honestly. The only reason I even bothered finishing Mass Effect Andromeda and Dragon Age Inquisition is because they were Bioware games. If they weren't, I probably would have never finished those games. So the fact that they that means this game is going to be mostly mission based I think is great. Another thing I'm really looking forward to is customizing my character, obviously. It looks like the characters are going to have backgrounds again, like Dragon Age Origins. It seems like you're going to be picked different backgrounds for your character. like whether they're a Shadow Dragon or Lord of Fortune or a Grey Warden, which I can't wait to play as. I love the Grey Wardens. Which is definitely nice compared to Inquisition where your background was pretty much already predetermined depending on what race you picked. For me, I played as a Dwarf, so my background was, I think I was a part of House Cardiff or something like that. So it's nice to be able to pick your background in this, which makes it easier to role play, which is what I really want to do. It's, and also what's interesting too is it seems like all the companions are going to be a part of that different faction like like one of the mages in this game is a shadow dragon one of the elves is a is a member of the Tevin crow so that really helps with role playing especially the fact that every single companion is romanceable in this which goes back to dragon age 2 which is very nice again i feel like i'm just bashing dragon age inquisition but that was another thing i didn't like about inquisition is i didn't like half the romance options in that game I feel like a lot of them were not interesting. I ended up romancing Josephine in that game because I felt like she was the most normal character in that game. At least so far, all the characters in this game look like they're going to be very interesting. We have some returning characters, some new characters, some characters who've been in other, who were introduced in other books and comic books. And of course, I'm wondering how many returning characters we're going to get and if we're going to get romanceable options outside of our companions like Inquisition because that is the one thing I did like about the companions in Inquisition is that there were people you can romance outside of the main group, which was nice. I'm sure everyone wants to romance Varric. I mean, look at him. How did they make him even more good looking? Me in particular, I'm just glad we're going to be able to romance a dwarf at all. How has it taken four games to be able to romance a freaking dwarf? Okay, I guess it's finally time to talk about the big egghead in the room. And no, I'm not talking about mine. I'm talking about Solus. <clears throat> So originally Dragon Age 4 was going to be called Dragon Age... Wait, what was it called? <laughs> now nah, I'm forgetting what the title was. So originally Dragon Age 4 was going to be called Dragon Age Dreadwolf. And now the title is Dragon Age The Veil Guard. And initially when I thought they changed the title, like most people, I thought that meant that Solus was going to be a major player in this game. And they, were, and they had to rewrite the story, which most likely they probably did rewrite the story. But it does seem like Solus is still going to be like a major player in the game, which is a good thing. And also the Inquisitor is also going to be in the game, just like how Inquisition Hawk from the previous game was in this. Which makes me wonder if who's going to die in this game, like in... Spoilers for Inquisition, but there was a big moment in that game where you can either sacrifice Hawk or another character depending on your choices from the previous game. And I feel like there's probably going to be a moment like that in this game. The developers already announced that you're going to be able to customize not just the main character in this game, Rook, but also the Inquisitor from the previous game and add and choose choices that are going to affect the rest of the game. And I think those choices are going to be two things. One. What was your relationship with Solus in the previous game? Were you friends with him? Did you romance him? Did you hate him like my character did? And two, how did you deal with the Inquisition at the end of the DLC from the last game? Did you disband him or did you keep him together? I think those are going to be the choices that are carry over because 
really what other choices were there in that game. There really wasn't that many choices in Inquisition that really mattered. And that's what I'm kind of hoping doesn't happen in this game. I hope that choices do matter in this game. Of course, more than anything, I personally want to be able to kill Solus. Great character, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, there is a target on his big head and I'm going to shoot him. Do you want me to take the shot? Well, yes! Yes! I will say graphically, I did think that this gameplay demo looked pretty good. I like the new monster designs. The screenshots that Bioware has been posting that I've seen on Twitter look pretty good. I like the different locations. That's one thing I will say about Inquisition is that the different locations, even though they weren't fun to travel around in, they at least look good. So I can't wait to go to new locations in this game, including the Fade. Always like going to the Fade in Dragon Age. Overall, I'm obviously gonna play this game when it comes out, even though this gameplay reveal didn't do much for me. Funny enough, I actually think the cinematic trailer was more exciting. I'm just weird like that, I guess. I know a lot of people didn't like that cinematic trailer at all. But I'm curious on how you guys felt about this trailer. Let's discuss it. What characters are you interested in romancing? What characters do you want to return? Let me know in, in the comments down below. I, I usually don't talk about video games on this channel. Actually, well, I pretty much talk about whatever I feel like talking about on this channel. The last time I talked about video games on this channel, I talked about Mortal Kombat 1, which you guys you guys roasted me in those comments. I, I still have PTSD from reading some of those comments. Honestly, I don't even know why I made those videos talking about Mortal Kombat 1. I never even played the game. I didn't even end up buying the game. But I love Dragon Age. Like I said, I played all the games, so I definitely will be playing Dragon Age when it comes out. I also might want to make videos on the other Dragon Age media. There's a lot. You know, whether we're talking about the anime or the movie or the books. If you're interested in seeing me talk about the books maybe, I have another channel with my sister. She's way more into reading books than I am and she's also a Dragon Age fan. I also have a gaming channel that I've barely uploaded on so so if you want to see me play the Dragon Age games leading up to Dragon Age the Velgard, go subscribe to that channel. And if you've made it this far in the video, which most of you probably haven't, but if you have, consider subscribing and liking this video. My next video will probably be a video about Doctor Who, so look out for that. Once again, this is Infinite Repeat. I've been Nate. Stay up.